I grew up, our house was a very warm house. My mom was the first Christian of our whole entire family, and so she raised us to know who Jesus was. And uh, maybe when I was about six or seven years old, my mom actually got really sick. She found out that she had kidney failure. I guess my dad couldn't handle the stress of it, and so he actually turned to drugs. In that time, my mom couldn't actually take care of me, and so I actually had to go live with my grandpa. And my grandpa didn't like people who were overweight. There was a lot of instances where I got beaten with, with metal rods and um, got punched in the face. And I remember a lot of times where I would be working out, um, he would have me do these workout regimens where I would have to wear about five sweaters and I would have to work out. And every single time he would stand next to me and say, you're good for nothing. Um, you're the reason why your mom got sick. You're, you know, you're, you'll never amount to anything in life. And so those things really got instilled in my heart where I became very insecure about myself and very hurt about myself. I, I didn't know who I was. It was really hard for me to, to believe in myself. I got into church, but at the same time, I, I got into the wrong, wrong crowd and I started to do pornography a, a lot. I didn't really see that there was a problem with it. I knew that it was wrong, but I felt like it was something that everyone did my age and they would just look at, you know, pornography and all of that. When I graduated from high school, that's kind of where everything just fell apart. My mom actually got really sick and I remember the day that I was, was there at the hospital, my mom stopped breathing. And what happened was that they got her heart back, but they said that it wasn't in the right beat. So she was gonna again pass away. That was really difficult because I really believed that God was gonna heal her. Like she loved Jesus with all of her heart. She loved God with all of her heart. And to, to see your mom pass away and believing for a healing, like it tore me up. And I started to do drugs. I started to, the pornography got worse. And I just went in a downward spiral. I remember one time I had the Costco, the Costco bottles of alcohol at home and I was just drinking, drinking away and I made myself another glass of, of vodka and I went to go sit down and I literally heard God say, you're going to end up exactly like your father. And that freaked me out. So I grabbed all my alcohol, I threw it in the trash can and I just wanted to come back to God. Since I was a kid, my mom would always put on the Hillsong CDs. She would put on these VHS tapes and we would watch watch them just worship and, and their heart of worship of how passionate they were. And after she passed away, this thought said that, you know, maybe you should you should get away and, and you know, try out for, for Hillsong. So I, I put in my application and um, I was accepted. I was accepted to the, the college. In that time, of me going through that and, and being able to, to be a part of the worship there. Pornography was still something that was, that was clinging to me. Even in, when I was going up and I was worshiping and singing on the stage at Hillsong, right after that, go home and look at pornography and cry and cry and cry. And this the cycle over and over and over of not understanding why I couldn't stop. It wasn't until God called me back here that he started to do something in my life majorly of, of transforming me, of breaking me. I knew that God was there in every single instance of my life. I knew that God was there breathing life into me. It wasn't until he brought me back here and in this desert time where he started to break things off of me, the things that I looked at myself, like you are good for nothing, you'll never amount to anything, all of these things were coming up and God was dealing with them. But I wasn't really ready to give that up until he kind of stripped everything away and it was just me and God. Up to three years ago was the last time where I looked at pornography. Because of the desert, it's like God transformed my way of thinking. Three years of not looking at that and being able to stand here and know that God is so much stronger. About two years before my grandpa passed away, he actually started to come to the services and 
he would watch me sing and he would, after I would sing, he would be like, oh, good job, good job. And he would come to church, come to church. And we, we asked him one day, Grandpa, did you give your life to Jesus? And um, he was like, yes, yes, I gave my life to Jesus. And so it, it was awesome to know that before he passed away that, that he was able to come and know who God was. In this time of, of me losing weight, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with my looks or anything like that. It has to do with what I want to do for God. And the things I want to do, I want to travel this world, I want to tell people about God. And sometimes I do get tired. And now it, instead of turning to food, it's like I turn to God. Now I lost about 90 pounds, but it's hard. It's hard, it's hard, but you know what? God is so much bigger. And this is something that I want to do because I want, I want to be free from that. I want to, I want to proclaim not only in the inside, but the outside that God is worthy and God is bigger than any single situation in our lives. God is so much bigger than the perspective that we have of him. And every single day that we live and get to know who God is, it's like a different perspective. But in this whole lifetime, we will never know all of the perspectives of God. I want to live my life in that, in that sense that even if, you know, even when I'm up there worshiping, like to point people to the person who has healed me, the person who has given back my life, the person who has torn these chains off of me, to point them to that person who has given me freedom. And I hope that in my prayers and in my worship and in my music that people will not see me because to tell you the truth, I'm still broken, but if people see Jesus in me, that's what people are looking for. They're not looking for another good singer. They're not looking for another great song. They're looking for someone who can heal them, who can restore them, who can give them life. And that is Jesus. Take away the melody Take away the songs I sing Take away all the lights And all the songs you let me write Does the man I am today Say the words you need to say Let them see Another brain, a grain of sand Passing quickly through your hand I give my life an offering Take it all, take everything But let them see Let them feel Let them hear you 
Let them see you. 